Hi, I'm Don Bodin from SampleLibraryReview.com. We're at NAMM 2016. I had a chance to sit down with Mike Beasley and Greg Stevens from Sound Iron. They've continued to release a slew of instruments after their giant Symphony Series brass collection, which came out just a few months ago. So Mike, I'm wondering what your uh, favorite library that you've developed for Sound Iron is. Uh, my favorite library is the Symphony Series Brass. Uh, for me and all of us, I think it was this culmination of, of years of sort of refining our technique and choosing the right location and, and really sort of imagining what we wanted to accomplish sonically with, with Brass in, in ways that made sense and, and, and we felt fit our vision for kind of tone and, and sort of hugeness and functionality, the way we, we approach it. So I think that was sort of our crowning achievement, you know. And the way it turned out, I think we've, you know, we've never put up together a more polished and complete library. And uh, working with NI on it to, to to sort of fully realize its its potential with this awesome UI and uh, just some very cool modular features. What do you feel like the most challenging library that you've developed has been? The most challenging was probably uh, just from my perspective. We did a harp guitar library, which was great, and um, Brad Hoyt was fantastic in letting us um, you know, record his, his guitar, but we had a limited amount of time, and there was so much to do, so much to record. I, I stayed up all night, uh, kind of on our last day, trying to get all the different sounds that we needed, and I was so exhausted by the morning that uh, Mike took over, and finally uh, we just had to, to let it go and let Brad get on his way. It was uh, recording a Shruti box, which is uh, a drone, an Indian uh, drone instrument. Recording that at all the different pitches caused me to lose hearing in one ear for like a day. And having to loop those samples after to be able to make it playable, you have to listen to it over and over again to do that. So I'm never going to record that instrument again. <laughs> That's pretty good. Is there another uh, developer's instruments that you use or you're passionate about? Yeah, honestly, uh, well, I mean, if we're talking about DAWs, I use I really like Reaper. I use both Cubase and Reaper kind of interchangeably almost. There are different plugins I use for EQ and stuff. I like the Fab Filter um, plugins, but uh, yeah, a lot of it's just kind of raw recording for uh, what I do. I, you look at what's around you. We have a family collection of these old artifacts passed down from my mom, uh, who was raised in Oklahoma on the, in the Cherokee Nation. And um, so you kind of have like the, the little pieces of your of your environment, the things that you know. When you pull those in as, as inspiration, I think it allows you to speak through an instrument in a different way than if you're just kind of walking to a music store and just picking something out. But a lot of the times, it's just it's almost like a free sort of free form thought. You just walk through life and look for what grabs you. And you know, often it's instruments or challenges like you know orchestras. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it's the small little things. We're about to update our original Antidrum 1 library, which is just a little hodgepodge of odds and ends and trinkets and environments, you know, that were kind of like in, in our lives at the time when we recorded it. And so it's kind of cool to go back and re-experience all those little sounds and like the, the early kind of learning, you know, and, and, and capturing all a lot of different sounds from your environment and saying, how can I make this into an instrument? Like, and then coming to the conclusion that everything is an instrument. Like, Everything around you, you could you could turn into a playable instrument if you just grab it the right way. Right. And so I think that's that's where it comes from. It's like looking around you and, and and feeling like what in your life calls out to becoming an instrument. So is there anything you can tell us about that you might be releasing in the not too distant future? Uh, we're working on woodwinds, and that's all I can say for now. In the short term, we we're working on something that I've been kind of waiting to record for a long time, Noah Bells. There's nothing very, I guess, dramatic about that. There's these little um, uh, Asian steel and tin bells that come, you know, go in various sizes. They have a very dark, kind of somber tone. They were usually found in monasteries, and now they're kind of common here. So that was something that we had a lot of fun recording. Thank you.